Yo, yo, YouTube, what's up with your boy, Sports and Fitness Rants? I'm back, guys. Click that like button. Subscribe to my channel. What's up, y'all? Welcome back, guys. Welcome back, man. Got another great video for you guys today. As usual, you guys know the deal on this channel. It's all about setting the record straight, stopping the lies, stopping the narratives. And in this video, man, I want to do a brief video, and I want to talk about Dennis Rodman uh, real quick in this video. Uh, I was watching the 1996 uh, Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, with the Orlando Magic versus Chicago Bulls. And I was watching, you know, I was observing uh, Dennis Rodman uh, and and how, you know, how he really was able to frustrate Shaquille O'Neal and just his overall game, man. And, you know, what I really respected and what I always really appreciated about Dennis Rodman and how he used hustle and grit, you know, to become a legend, man, essentially. That's what it was. It was just hard work for Dennis Rodman. Like I said, out there hustling, uh, and, and I want to talk, talk briefly uh, in this video uh, to, about Dennis Rodman and his heart, his hustle, and how he used this kind of stuff to become an NBA legend, man. And I want to thank you guys, everyone across the world, everyone across the states, man, has been supporting my channel. Thank you very much, guys. I am truly humbled, man, for real, guys. You know how I, I feel, man. And that's why I always thank you guys. So shout out to all you guys, everyone in the membership. Much respect to everyone out there, uh, everyone that's been standing up, man. Like I said, I know my videos aren't fancy or flashy, and, uh, you know, I ramble on sometimes, and... You know, like I said, we, we may not agree on everything, guys. And it's not about you believing that Michael Jordan's the greatest of all time or not. Uh, it's Like I said, it's all about setting the record straight here, man. Put some respect on some of these past errors, these past players. Put some context and perspective here, guys. Uh, it's very important that we do that. Uh, so thank you to all you guys out there for real, man. And you guys know what to do. Turn the volume all the way up. Hit that play button. Remember, these videos are for educational purposes. And let's roll. So, yes, guys, like I said, man, I wanted to talk briefly about my man Dennis Rodman. Uh, one of my favorite basketball players of all time. Sorry, guys, my nose is itching right now. Um, one of my favorite basketball players of all time, man. I remember when I was in high school, uh, I read his book. I believe it was called Bad As I Want to Be. Um, and, like, on the cover, he's, like, naked, like, with, like, a basketball covering him up. And, like, I think he's, like, it's like a motorcycle. He's, like, sitting on a motorcycle or something like that, if I remember correctly uh, what the book cover was. But it was a really good book, man. Like I said, and it went through his whole life from childhood. And, I mean, when you... You know, you learn about Dennis Rodman's, you know, story, man, like where he came from as far as like, you know, really not having anything. I mean, it's really it's really crazy. It's, it's eye opening, man. And it really puts perspective once again uh, behind the mind of someone like a Dennis Rodman. Like I said where he came from uh, to, to and to where he got, you know, like I said, and, and how he got there. That's the most impressive thing about Dennis Rodman. And when you think about his story, you know, a lot of people don't realize, you know, he went to a small college. It was like a like a junior college or whatever it was. And, uh, you know, Dennis Rodman was averaging, I believe, over 20 points a game uh, for this college. Uh, and he was an, had an offensive game. He had a, a jump shot, a, an offensive game of, that he had. You know, he wasn't just a rebounder or a defensive player, you know, at this time. And, you know, like I said, I was watching the, the 1996 uh, Eastern Conference Finals last night, and I've been watching, you know, some old games, and I do it from time to time, I go back and I watch some old games, not for any kind of, you know, research purposes or anything like that, or educational purposes, I do it more for the enjoyment, like I said, I, I enjoy watching the golden era of NBA, I enjoy watching a lot of those Chicago Bulls series, obviously I enjoy watching Michael Jordan, and like I said, man, I was watching the series, and I believe I was watching, uh, it was game four last night I was watching uh, when they closed it out. And, and and what I noticed with Dennis Rodman is, like I said, when, when I talk about the hustle, the heart, the grit of Dennis Rodman, you know, we talk about rebounding and we talk about defense, right? One of the things I noticed about Dennis Rodman, you know, uh, in relation to Shaquille O'Neal, who sometimes or oftentimes he was matched up against in that series, is that Dennis Rodman would get down the court faster than Shaquille O'Neal. So from time to time, Dennis Rodman, you know, they get the rebound, the Chicago Bulls, whether it's Dennis Rodman or whoever it is, they get the rebound, they, they outlet it, and they get down the court. Dennis Rodman would out-hustle Shaquille O'Neal down the court oftentimes, you know, during this series. And they would hit Dennis Rodman for a wide-open layup under, you know, under the, uh, the basket because Shaquille O'Neal did not get down. Now, Obviously, Shaquille O'Neal is a lot bigger than a Dennis Rodman. You're talking about a seven foot one, seven foot two, you know, three hundred and twenty pound, you know, man uh, running up and down the court. That's not something you know easy to do. Uh, this goes to the greatness of Shaquille O'Neal, his athleticism, especially those early years when he was on Orlando. He was a lot more athletic, you know, because he was a lot more trim. He was leaner, uh, 
lot me, leaner and meaner, uh, Shaquille O'Neal, on those Orlando days. Like I said, he could move better up and down the court. But even in 1996, Dennis Rodman, at, what was he, like 35 years old, I believe, at that time, Shaquille O'Neal was probably 25 years old uh, at that time. You know, maybe 26, somewhere around there. Dennis Rodman was able to get down the court better than, than Shaq was oftentimes, man. He was able to just get down the court, beat Shaq down to the other block, like I said, and put himself in a position to get an easy basket or get himself in great rebounding pose uh, possession uh, position. And, and that goes to the greatness of Dennis Rodman. That goes to the hustle of Dennis Rodman. The man used hustle. He used his grit, his mental toughness. The mental toughness of Dennis Rodman. It's not just the physical toughness of a Dennis Rodman. When we talk about being a tough individual, it's not about you being able to fight somebody or you being able to beat up people. You know, you could fight, you could beat 10 guys up at once. That's not what makes you tough. That makes you a good fighter. You're good at fighting. That doesn't make you tough, right? And being physically tough is not the only way you could be tough. You have to be mentally tough as well. And oftentimes, mental toughness is the most important kind of toughness that you need. It's the mental toughness. Listen, bones will break. Your skin will bruise, right? Muscles and all these things can tear. All that stuff can happen to you. It's the mental fortitude that you have to have to be able to hold it together, to push through the pain. It's the mental toughness. Pain's going to be there, right? You ever heard someone talk or people talk about a, a pain threshold? How much can you tolerate? It's different for people. Every other person out there is different. People have different pain thresholds. Some people you know they can take a lot. It don't even seem to phase them. This is Dennis Rodman, the mental toughness of someone like him that developed from an early age. I told you, had a rough life. And he didn't forget where he came from. And he continued to keep that strong mental all of those years. The problem with a lot of these guys today, they don't have the mental toughness. They forget where they come from. A lot of these guys don't come from anything. They come from, you know, bad areas or they don't they don't come from money right their families struggle to get by they live check to check but then all of a sudden these guys get this money get all this money they immediately forget everything they forget where they came from the struggle that they had to go through you know what they went they forget this stuff and then they act like they're better than everybody else now and that they're too good to be compared to these kinds of people they look down on us the commoners you know it don't it don't make any sense I never got that sense from a Dennis Rodman. Never forgot where he came from. Always remained humble, Dennis Rodman. Always seemed like a grateful, thankful person, even though there were times that he says crazy things and he does crazy things and you wonder where the hell he is mentally. You don't even know if he's there sometimes. But you knew one thing for certain about Dennis Rodman is he was going to go out there and he was going to earn it. He was going to go out there and give the effort. That was part of the reason why Michael Jordan was okay with bringing Dennis Rodman in. That was part of the reason why he supported that decision, even though someone like Scottie Pippen did not want Dennis Rodman. It was Michael Jordan that said, yeah, we can handle him. We need him. We could use him. And he knew that. Why? Because he knew Dennis Rodman was a true professional, a competitor. He was going to go out there and compete, give the effort. That's one of the things I always respected and loved about Dennis Rodman, but that he was not afraid to be who he was, even though we may have looked at him weird and, you know, he did some weird things that I would not do. And he says weird things that you don't know what he's talking about. I always respect him for being himself. It's not easy for people to be themselves in society, in the world, especially during those times where people are going to look at you funny. People are going to say things about you. People are going to judge you. Dennis Rodman wasn't afraid to, to, to be that and to be that person, to be him. And also the way that he approached the game, the effort he gave, I respected it. Now, yes, the Detroit Pistons, Dennis Rodman, they were a little dirty. We've talked about on this channel. But I always respected the effort that Dennis Rodman gave, man. He said he was a true professional, man, a true professional. And when I was watching that game, uh, watching the series, the Orlando Magic versus Chicago Bulls, Dennis Rodman, Shaquille O'Neal, and the dynamics there, and I'm watching Dennis Rodman get down the court and be shagged down to the block on the opposite end and set himself up for, like I said, either offensive rebounding position or to get an easy basket, man. If you guys didn't notice, or if you guys do notice, during that series against Orlando Magic, I believe Dennis Rodman averaged like 10 points a game or something like that in that series, which is really unheard of at that time of his career. He never focused on scoring. He was an opportunistic scorer. If he had a wide open layup, right, he had got a good position. Maybe he tipped the ball on an offensive rebound. That was really Dennis Rodman. Yeah, every once in a while, he'd chuck up a weird shot. He'd shoot a three or something like that. He'd do something out of character. 
That's Dennis Rod, that Dennis Rodman. That was him, man. That was part of what you had to deal with. You had to put up with as a Michael Jordan, as a leader. You have to deal with those kinds of things with Dennis Rodman. But he averaged, I believe, in double figures in that season. If I'm not mistaken, I could, I could, I could be wrong, but I could remember. I could have sworn I remember Dennis Rodman averaging like 10, 11 points, maybe even 12 points in that series. So these are things I'm alluding to. Dennis Rodman getting easy baskets, beating Shaq down the court, tipping balls in. I mean, out rebounding Shaquille O'Neal, even though he's what three, four, five inches shorter, and like. I don't even know, almost 100 pounds probably lighter than Shaquille O'Neal. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, and at that point of Shaquille O'Neal's career, he was way more athletic than he was when he was in L.A. in the, you know, mid-2000s, let's say. And Dennis Rodman was out there out hustling guys. That's what he did. You know, we talk about great defensive players, and we're talking about being a great defender. Sometimes people think about steals and blocks. And they'll look at numbers, right? And they'll say, oh, look how many steals this guy averaged. Look how many blocks this guy averaged. And yes, that can give you an indication or an indicator of a person's prowess, their aggression on the defensive end. Yes, that may be true. But that doesn't tell you the whole story, all right? Just because you average a lot of steals or you were able to accumulate a lot of steals um, doesn't necessarily, or blocks, doesn't necessarily make you a great defensive player, right? It doesn't make you a great defender. And the, the and the and the excuse me guys and the opposite is also true, right? You can be a great defensive player and never accumulate blocks and steals at a high volume. So for example, Dennis Rodman and I believe my man uh, Rex on the Sunday Live show he brought this up and I meant to do a video about this, uh, guys. Uh, and basically, you know, say you don't need steals and blocks to be considered a great defensive player. It's not just about the steals and the blocks. Now, yes, great defensive players do oftentimes accumulate steals. They get block shots. And, and we get all of that, right? The Michael Jordans, the John Stocktons, the Hakeem Olajuwans, right? You know, some of these guys that, that were great defensive players, they would accumulate a lot of steals. But there were also many great defenders that did not accumulate any steals or blocks, but they're still great defensive players. And Dennis Rodman was one of those uh, such type players. He didn't accumulate a lot of block shots. He didn't get a lot of steals or create a lot of steals. But what he did was play great, solid position defense on his man. He played great team defense, help defense, and he had a high IQ out there, right? So Dennis Rodman's an all-time great defensive player, arguably the greatest defender in NBA's history, to me, I told you guys, he's the most versatile defensive player that I've ever seen. I told you, I witnessed him guard Michael Jordan. I saw him guard Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, and do this effectively. He's just out there guarding them, just standing around and having these guys abuse him. He's being effective. He's making them work. He's making them earn it. I saw him guard Michael Jordan. I saw him guard Karl Malone. I watched him guard Shaquille O'Neal. That's the most versatile defensive player I've ever seen in my life, guys to guard one through five effectively when it mattered most. Not during a regular season game or a quarter here or a quarter there. He's doing this in the postseason, in the NBA Finals, against guys like Magic Johnson. This is what he's doing. He's guarding Carl Malone in the NBA Finals. And he's being effective at a high level. That's Dennis Rodman, guys. That's the effort that he gave. And once again, he did not create a lot of steals and blocks, but he's still regarded as one of the greatest defensive players of all time. Because of the way that he approached the game, his rebounding prowess, his mental toughness, his high IQ. These are all the things that Dennis Rodman used to be elite, to be legendary. Arguably the greatest rebounder in the history of the game. And arguably the greatest defensive player in the history of the game. Even though he was undersized oftentimes, especially on the Chicago Bulls in that second three-peat. Oftentimes he was undersized, going against guys like Karl Malone, going against guys like Shaquille O'Neal. Right? Going against guys like Alonzo Mourning. Going against these guys. So once again, shout out to Dennis Rodman, the effort that he gave out there on the court, the hustle that he used to become legendary, his mental IQ, studying rebounding. I tell you, he was a true student in the game, man. He studied film, Dennis Rodman. These, they, see, people talk about Dennis Rodman sometimes when they think about some of these professionals back in the 80s and the 90s. Like, these guys are just some idiots out there. Like I said, they act as if they weren't playing basketball until 2010, 2015. They didn't play basketball in the NBA before that. Dennis Rodman, these guys studied film, man. They watched the game. They studied, they studied this stuff. I told you guys used to watch film on Michael Jordan to guard him more effectively, to learn his tendencies, all this stuff. They took a pride in these things. Guys like John Starks and Gerald Wilkins, these guys that people make fun of, like, who are these guys? These guys are true pros, man. They were competitors. 
they were competitors so much that they studied film on Michael Jordan. Gary Payton, these guys all study film on Michael Jordan to guard him more effectively, to be prepared, to beat him. And that was Dennis Rodman. He studied film on players. He studied film on guys shooting, the way they shot the ball. He watched it go in the air. His instincts, the timing. That's Dennis Rodman, guys. And that's why he's literally a Hall of Famer, one of the all-time great players, right off of hustle, heart. The toughness of Dennis Rodman. And he was a very great athlete, Dennis Rodman, probably an underrated athlete. His strength is underrated. His core base strength. When you when I'm watching him go against Shaquille O'Neal, even when you listen to the broadcasters, they're they're baffled and uh, they're blown away at Dennis Rodman's ability to push Shaq off the block. I mean, these are things I'm alluding to. It's not just about you guys at blocking shots or creating steals. It's about Dennis Rodman pushing Shaq away from the block further out than he wants to be, and holding his position. He's able to do that against a guy that size who outweighs him. That's the toughness, man. And that's the greatness of Dennis Rodman, man. Never backing down. Yes, Dennis Rodman was a head case. Yes, he did some weird things. He says weird things. He's not there mentally. We get all that. But that craziness also went to his greatness, right? There's a, there's a thin line, right, in there between being like a crazy and being like a genius like being like a, like a mad scientist that was Dennis Rodman he was a mad scientist out there on the basketball court when it came to defense and rebounding he took a lot of pride in this stuff he gave the effort it mattered to him that was his focus to go out there and dominate on the glass and dominate defensively that's his mission and he did it just as great as anyone else in the history of the game guys the history of the game he focused on those aspects of basketball, and he was great at it. People try to downplay Dennis Rodman sometimes, and you know they'll say he's a one-dimensional guy. He's not one-dimensional. He rebounds and plays defense. That's two aspects of the game right there. And when you're talking about Dennis Rodman's defense and rebounding, it, you can't just say, oh, yeah, he plays really good defense, and, he play, and he's a good rebounder. No. Dennis Rodman, like I said, is arguably the greatest rebounder, probably the pound-for-pound, pound, the greatest rebounder, He's up there with guys like Elgin Baylor and Charles Barkley as far as pound for pound rebounding prowess. But he's arguably the greatest rebound of all time. Seven straight rebounding titles. No one's doing that. Not that size. No one's doing this. And he's arguably the greatest uh, defensive player in the history of the game. To me, I told you, the most versatile defensive player. I don't even think that's an argument. I think Dennis Rodman is easily the most versatile defensive player. You know, LeBron James gets a lot of hype for one through five. He can guard one through five. No. Dennis Rodman could guard one through five for an entire game effectively at a high level when it matters most. Dennis Rodman could do that. He's the only person I've seen that I've witnessed do this consistently at a high level. Other guys may have been able to do from time to time, the Kevin Garnett's, the Ben Wallace's, some of these guys that have the footwork, the athletic ability, right? The effort, the tenacity on the defensive end. But it's Dennis Rodman, to me, that could do it more effectively at a high level when it matters most. Dennis Rodman, guys. This is what he earned it. All on the, the effort and the hard work, right? Like I said, studying the game. Being a true student of the game. Playing with that effort. Playing with that love. And being a true competitor. That's what Dennis Rodman was. He competed with people, man. He played mind games with these guys. Mind games with grown men. He was out there mind gaming them. Forcing them to be uncomfortable. Right? Getting them to focus on him instead of focusing on the game. That's what Dennis Rodman did. That's why Michael Jordan, when Michael Jordan used to go against the bad boy Pistons, if you ever notice, Michael Jordan never let these guys get to him mentally. He didn't let that happen. That's part of his greatness. The mental fortitude strength of Michael Jordan to deal with those antics, the tactics. So he'll go nose to nose with Dennis Rodman. He'll go nose to nose with Mark Aguirre. He'll go nose to nose and toe to toe with a Bill Lane beer. Right? He'll do these things. He'll stand up for Scottie Pippen and Horace Grant. He was the enforcer. He was the big brother. That was his job, man. So he knew what Dennis Rodman was bringing to the table. You guys know what Dennis Rodman brought to the table. So shout out to Dennis Rodman. Like I said, man, I was watching him during that, that nice Eastern Conference Finals against Shaquille O'Neal. And I mean, this guy was working, man. He was on that glass, giving the effort, getting the crowd all riled up, getting his teammates all pumped up, giving the energy to the Chicago Bulls. 
beating Shaq up and down the court, beating him on the glass. At 35 years old, Dennis Rodman was doing that, guys. At 35 years old, undersized, out there giving the effort, hustling, making Shaq earn it. Like I said, man, and just like I said, out muscling, out hustling, guys. You guys know the deal, man. Once again, much respect to Dennis Rodman, man. Shout out to him. He became legendary off his heart, off his hustle, off his grit, man. His personality was, like I said, man, was really unique and one of a kind. And we'll never see anyone like a Dennis Rodman in the NBA, right? Never. You guys know the deal, man. I'll catch you guys on the next one.